Just yesterday, a former drug enforcement agent said that from 1986 until he retired in 1992, he documented evidence that the CIA participated in cocaine distribution to Los Angeles gangs. The CIA and the DEA knew that the Contra pilots were involved in narcotics trafficking. Congresswoman Maxine Waters represents that Los Angeles district where the alleged drug distribution was centered. She joins us from Los Angeles this morning. And in Washington, reporter Gary Webb of the San Jose Mercury, his reporting first detailed those charges. Thank you both for joining us this morning. You're welcome. Representative Waters, the allegations of drug running reached to the DEA, the CIA, the State Department, the White House. These are incredibly serious allegations. Do you believe them to be true? Uh, I find uh, Gary Webb's work very compelling. He names names, he uh, describes situations, there's documentation, so much so that I've spent the last couple of weeks just making sure we get some investigations going. Gary, your series in the San Jose Mercury includes some interviews with drug traffickers, some informants. How reliable were your sources for this piece? Well, the, the central source for it is now a DEA informant. I mean, he testified to a lot of this stuff under oath on the witness stand down in San Diego in March. And last Friday, the U.S. Uh, government stood up in court and said the man's believable. They believe everything he says. And so what happens from the, at this point, M Maxine Waters? Well, you know, we've gotten two investigations going. Uh, the Intelligence Committee of the House of Representatives uh, will start an investigation. The Inspector General of the CIA's office, w in cooperation with the Inspector General from the Justice Department, uh, have started an investigation. So we're off to a good beginning, at least getting our foot in the door. Of course, there's a lot more work to do, a lot more follow-up to do. We're organizing in the communities, helping them to understand what's taken place, disseminating information, reproducing the San Jose Mercury uh, web uh, uh, investigation, and uh, we believe that a combination of all of these efforts may help us to realize and reap information that will tell us who knew what and when. But these allegations have been investigated before. Janet Reno says the Justice Department will open the investigation again. They'll look into it, but before they've looked into it and found nothing, John Deutsch with the CIA said the same thing. There has never been an investigation uh, about drug trafficking by CIA operatives that allowed uh, tons of cocaine turned into crack uh, to go into our inner cities, starting with Los Angeles, divided, spread out among the gangs uh, for sale, for profit, that went to the Contras. That kind of investigation has not been done by anybody. Gary, do you believe? Gary Webb. Gary, do you believe that uh, Janet Reno's investigation and John Deutsch's investigation will be enough to get to the heart of this matter? I, I'm not sure. Um, I, I don't think it'll be enough to satisfy a lot of Americans that uh, you know two federal agencies that. that played some, some kind of role in this thing are going to be able to investigate themselves and, and do it fairly. I think what's needed is an outside uh, panel or an outside commission to come in and look at these documents and see exactly what's there. This morning you're going to talk to uh, members of Congress, Gary. What do you intend to tell them? Uh, well, I really don't know. I mean, I've been asked to, to come brief them on this story, and I presume I'm going to tell them exactly what we found, um, which is the same thing anybody else in the world can see if they want to. They can go to our website at www.sjmercury.com slash drugs and look up the whole series for themselves. We've got all the DEA undercover tapes. We've got the FBI reports. We've got the court records, and they're all posted for people to see. Congresswoman Waters, one of the things that Dick Gregory and some other civil rights activists have asked for is the, a bill called the Records Act, which would declassify all documents related to the CIA's alleged involvements in these cocaine shipments. Do you feel like that uh, is going to pass? Well, I don't know. There's been no uh, legislation to that effect yet. Uh, like I said, we've gotten started. We've opened the door. We've got a long way to go. And we have a lot of alternatives. Those of us who are committed uh, to finding out what took place may decide at a later date to do any number of things. But for now, we've opened the door. We've gotten started. Some people thought we'd never get started with these kinds of investigations. But let's see what happens here. Gary, you were criticized initially. Do you feel like the public is ready for some answers on this? I think the public's always ready for answers on this. I mean, the, the central thing of this series that we tried to show, and it wasn't particularly that the CIA knew about it, it was how crack came to be such a problem mm -hmm. in America. That's what our series is about, and this is, this is what we found, that it was connected to this Nicaraguan cocaine pipeline. Okay, great.
Gary Webb, Maxine Waters, thank you for joining us this morning. You're certainly welcome. Good afternoon. I asked you folks to come in today so we could attempt to clarify some of the information that's floating around relative to an allegation that somehow Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department either knew about an alleged CIA involvement in the distribution of cocaine in this community or that uh, after the fact we've been involved in uh, some sort of cover-up. Uh, all of this seemed to originate with a, a document that Attorney Harlan Braun uh, submitted in the federal court uh, during the trial of uh, uh, former Deputy uh, Daniel Garner, who was among, their num among a number of deputies who were prosecuted for uh, skimming money from uh, drug seizures uh, during their uh, investigative effort. Uh, and this document became apparently the uh, centerpiece or a series of stories that have been reported in the uh, San Jose uh, Mercury News. Uh, and I think there have been just some slight stretching of the uh, facts in uh, some of these reports. Uh, uh, for example, uh, I have a copy here from uh, the Mercury News that says, according to a sworn statement police filed to obtain a search warrant, Lister and others were dealing drugs and laundering money on behalf of a CAI-sponsored guerrilla army in Nicaragua. He says that according to our sworn statement, uh, this is what was presented to uh, obtain the search warrant. Uh, in reality, in the search warrant affidavit, uh, we did in fact say that we had information it indicated that this organization, headed by a man by the name of Blandone, and I made this statement at the media open house just two weeks ago here in this, this very room, uh, that they were selling large quantities of cocaine uh, in the Los Angeles area, that the money was being uh, transferred to a Florida bank where it was laundered, uh, and then finding its way down to uh, Central America in support of the uh, contra effort against the uh, Nicaraguan government. Never at any time do we try to conceal that fact, uh, but nothing that we've obtained then or now would indicate any knowledge of involvement by the CIA. And let me say that if the CIA or any other agency of the federal government is or was in fact involved in the distribution of illicit drugs uh, in this community or any community, then they should be dealt with in the same manner that anyone who would stoop so low as to distribute that poison uh, throughout our community. So certainly uh, we have no interest in protecting them. Uh, secondly, uh, there seemed to be a great deal of concern because the Sheriff's Department uh, allegedly did not uh, pursue this, uh, this possibility when one of the subjects in the uh, raids that they indicated uh, that he was working with the CIA. Uh, be advised that both the Drug Enforcement Administration and the Federal Bureau of Investigation uh, were involved in these series of raids. In fact, our information relative to Contra involvement, uh, most of that came from the FBI and the DEA from their informants who were providing information about this same group, the Bland, uh, the Blandone group. There's also been an allegation made that evidence disappeared from the 
evidence locker in the sheriff's department, uh, as was uh, reported, uh, CIA agents swooped down on the sheriff's uh, department and removed this stuff from the evidence locker. Every piece of evidence seized in that raid that was recorded in the original reports and was all recorded uh, was properly transported to the evidence locker, was properly recorded in the evidence ledger, the paper trail as to what happened to each piece of evidence uh, is absolutely accurate and complete. Uh, the items that particularly in one of the uh, reports here, uh, information that uh, uh, Mr. Webb, the reporter for the Mercury News, uh, reported that he received from one of the deputies who was involved, uh, including some uh, alleged training films and uh, uh, military photos. Uh, uh, here it is. Uh, uh, three monitors, one video camera, one box of training manuals, three card files, five large checkbooks, one envelope containing military training films, one envelope containing mail, pay, and O's, financial information, one ev envelope containing miscellaneous papers for Lester and Moreno, those were two of the uh, subjects, and one box with miscellaneous ammunition. Every one of those items were transported to the sheriff's uh, uh, evidence locker. Uh, all of those items were ultimately transferred to the department's property custodian in February of 1987, and in December of 1987, uh, they were disposed of according to department policy and state law. Uh, those items that were usable, such as the monitors and the camera uh, and the ammunition, uh, those things were transferred to departmental use, as we do with uh, much unclaimed evidence. Uh, those evidence that had no value were destroyed by the property custodian out at the uh, uh, property uh, warehouse uh, as they do with uh, uh, all unclaimed property. Most of the property was returned to the attorneys, uh, the subjects in this case, because there were no criminal filings. The district attorney uh, rejected the filing against uh, uh, the Blandones because of the small amount of drugs that were found. Uh, the federal people then took the case to the U.S. attorney uh, they refused to file the case before uh, because of the small amount uh, of drugs that were found. Uh, a message was sent from a local office here, the FBI, uh, to the headquarters of the FBI in, in Washington, D.C., uh, outlining the facts of the case, and they came to the conclusion that no further investigation uh, was warranted. Uh, one of the FBI agents, because of the statements made by one of the subjects, uh, sent all of the names of the people involved in this investigation uh, back to the CIA, we're told, and the response came back that one person was known to them as a cocaine dealer. Uh, the others were unknown to that, uh, to that agency. Uh, so I guess the sum and substance of what I'm saying is that uh, in spite of, first of all, uh, the information that we had going in uh, that this organization might be involved in a, uh, an operation uh, uh, supplying funds for the Contras, uh, well aware of uh, what was going on in, uh, in Washington, the debate over uh, funding for the Contras and everything else did not in any way uh, dissuade us from going ahead with the investigation and pursuing the investigation as we would uh, any other uh, narcotics investigation. Uh, there was great disappointment when based upon the allegation of the large quantity of drugs that these people were dealing, uh, that no large quantity of drugs or large sums of money uh, were recovered. Uh, in a later time, the original informant uh, indicated that they believed that somehow 
these people became aware of the surveillance which had been going on by some for some time, either by us or by the federal agents, uh, and that caused them to make sure that they did not have anything uh, when the raids would say expected would probably occur because of their surveillance uh, took place. Uh, so with that, I'll throw it out to any questions that you may have. Why is it the Department for, uh, in recent months, has said that there were no records of this raid whatsoever? To whom? To the Mercury News. Well, we didn't. The Mercury News called and asked for one specific piece of paper. That was in November. A copy of the affidavit and search warrant, and we were unable to to locate that. What about on March 5th? Um, I understand that Gary Webb was told that there were no records of it whatsoever. Well, you know, Maxine Waters came to the Record Bureau last week and asked for copies of the reports involved in this case. She had a file number and she was given the report, 70 pages worth. So there's been no effort to conceal anything from anybody. Are there concerns that during the course of this investigation, I mean, there have been suggestions that uh, uh, people affiliated with the federal government might have tipped off these targets. I have range. no idea who might have tipped off the targets. Uh, well, but that charge was contained in Harlan Braun's thing that was filed in court. Well, and I remember, Harlan Braun was defending a group of individuals who were charged with some very significant crimes. who all ultimately all went to federal prison uh, for their actions of, of stealing large, large quantities of money. But you also had. Uh, deputies talking about specifically this guy saying, you know, coming to the door, saying, I know why you're here, um, but you're not supposed to be here, and I'm with the CIA, I have to make a phone call. Was that not, was there any investigation into that? That, that was in the report. Mm -hmm. It was in the report. You know, what the, the individual, you're talking about this Ronald Lister, Lister. Yeah. and what he said to the deputies that, you know, my contacts are going to be angry, or you're not supposed to be here, right. uh, didn't dissuade the deputies at all. They went on with what they were supposed to do. So, yeah, he said that, and they reported that in their report. But was was that confirmed, Sheriff, that he was, in fact, working for the CIA we, or had ties with we, we would have no way of confirming that or not confirming that. Well, calling the CIA. Yeah. Well, you think they'd tell us? <laughs> <laughs> At least the attempt. Um, I told you, the FBI sent the list of all the people involved in this case well, the to the CIA. Mm -hmm. And they came back and said that one was a cocaine dealer. That's all they knew. And which one was that? I, I don't know which one that was. Cocaine and was it working for the CIA or just a co wor cocaine dealer working for the CIA? Or? Well, all they said, they knew he was a cocaine dealer. If we can go back to the evidence, so just to, to clarify, uh, you've had uh, some of the uh, of the items that were seized during the raids uh, in October of '86 were either uh, destroyed and or items as the uh, they were, they cameras were, and so forth. Uh, they were either they they either returned to the owner or returned to their attorney with an authorization, as we do in cases where there is no prosecution. We don't use for evidence. Uh, those things that were not claimed were ultimately transferred to the property custodian, and those items which were usable by the department, such as TV monitors and a camera, and ammunition which went to the crime lab for their firearms testing, uh, those things were retained by the department. Uh, those things that have no value uh, were destroyed by the uh, uh, evidence uh, uh, people. So and some of that- routine. So, but did any of those materials wind up being taken by the FBI, the CIA, or any no, other federal nothing, agencies? Nothing. The, the federal agencies made copies of the papers in our possession. Uh, DEA, FBI, and IRS, because there were the possibility of some tax liabilities, uh, uh, as indicated by some of the financial records. Uh, so they Xerox copies of what they wanted, but not one item. Uh, was given to or taken by anybody uh, outside of the evidence uh, in our possession other than the owner of the property or their attorneys with an authorization or what was transferred to the property custodian for, sure. uh, for disposal. And the Sheriff's Department no longer has any such evidence from they, those raids? have no evidence other than the monitors may still be around, the camera may still be around, but there'd be no 
uh, the stuff that was destroyed, papers or whatever. What are the rules governing the disposal of evidence? Is, is there a standard rule? Yes. After, after six months, if uh, property is not uh, claimed and not returned to the owner, it's either uh, sold at auction, uh, retained by the department, if it's useful to another governmental agency, it may be given to them, and those things that have no value are destroyed. If it's contraband, then they're certainly destroyed, such as narcotics. So sure. Six months of what? Six months of the six arrest? Months, six months of the trial? Six months from the uh, completion of the case if there's a prosecution, or six months from the time of seizure if there is no prosecution. Sheriff, Representative uh, Waters said that it was very difficult for her to get this material. No, she and had to ask. Well, she says as she was trying to get this material, what she was telling us is that somebody was trying to prevent her from being able to get copies and walk out of the uh, clerk's office. That's absolute nonsense. She, she walked, somebody called uh, that day and said they were doing a research project on a man by the name of Landone. And the record bureau says, well, you know, you have to have something more than that before, but if you come down here with information, we could check our files. This person showed up with uh, uh, Maxine Waters later that, that afternoon. Uh, she had file numbers, uh, she had names, and uh, the information was, you know, they had to go into the micro fish to get it because this case is 10 years old. It wasn't readily available in the and made copies of it and was given to her. Sheriff, is it often that uh, deputies come in contact with CIA agents when they're conducting investigations or narcotics investigations? We don't know we came in contact with CIA agents then. Are you investigating with them? Do we claim that their CIA agents? Has anything like this ever happened before? I, I don't. People claim all sorts of things, but they're irrelevant. Uh, what, what is the relevance of somebody claiming their a CIA agent if it didn't dissuade our people from continuing their investigation. Well, at one point this gentleman was a suspect, sir. He said he was a CIA agent and he wasn't arrested. I mean, could any suspect just say, hey, I'm a CIA agent and walk away? They weren't arrested because they didn't find anything on which to arrest him. They did find drugs in Glendon's home. What? Okay. No, they didn't. They, in Glendon's home. Yeah, they right. arrested Glendon. But he wasn't charged. Well, I told you, the DA said the amount was not large enough, and this U.S. attorney advised the federal investigators it was not large enough to charge. Do you have copies of the, the release, whatever report is written up, that sort of tracks the course of property uh, have, based on, on Lister's property? On absolutely. Something? Absolutely. Can we have a copy? It's in the report. It's in the uh, evidence log at the Narcotics Bureau. According and it, goes, Mercury, and it goes from that to the... Well, property custodian, the paper trail is complete. Well, according to the Mercury, it's complete for the other locations, but not for Lister's house. It's complete for Lister's. Um, how, how, does, how, does, how does Mercury know? They didn't see anything. They didn't check anything. Well, I think how, how do they know? All he knows is what, uh, you know, you get second, third, or fourth hand from, uh, from one deputy who told another deputy who told another deputy. No, uh, but, they I, but I can tell you that you know, uh, I am encouraging, you know, that there be either a full congressional hearing or some special commission uh, to resolve this thing once and for all. And, and I am not going to release any additional information and retain that and so that they can subpoena or they can have the whole, uh, the entire record. But the release, so, sure. the release reports would be part of the public record, so you should be able to release a copy of that. The release reports? Yeah, on what happened to the property from Lister's house. It's in a ledger. It's in a big ledger. Where, where's the ledger from Lister? Um, Ron, Ron Lister. There's from all the his property. From the Legardo address? From the Lobardo address. Everything's listed. But, does it, but what I'm asking about is the report that documents what happened to it after it was seized. You know, when it was, if as you say, released to attorneys or... Well, it's all recorded in here. Mm -hmm. And then what wasn't released to the attorneys went to the property custodian. And their records show the disposition of that. So you're sure, saying absolutely. this is a legal document, this is a paper trail that's you know done with all all evidence. So you're saying categorically the CIA did not come to the sheriff's department. I'm saying and it did categorically, not. absolutely. 
that. Sure, can you tell us why Glendon and, and the other Mr. weren't charged with uh, conspiracy based, if nothing else, on the affidavit uh, well, by your deputy, which uh, allowed the judge to sign it? Why weren't they charged with conspiracy since there are so many people in prison today? Well, that's based on well, you know, our, our affidavit was based on statements of reliable informants, people who have given us information in the past that have proven to be valid. And on that basis, the judge issued a search warrant for those locations. He did not issue any arrest warrants because all we had was information. And the search warrants were issued for 13 <coughs> locations, <coughs> and including two of one location was Lister's, and then at the time of that, uh, the information... Uh, no evidence to support the affidavit. We found, well, we found no evidence to support the affidavit, and no evidence of, uh, that showed this group were, uh, were all even related. What, what, what did you make of that? Huh? What did you make of that? You had all this information. What, what do we make of it? Yeah, that there well, was no, uh, that there was we, no uh, well, drugs. Well, what we found made, or anything else well, what after we that search. What we suspected was that, that somehow they knew they were the subject of an investigation. The informant indicated later that uh, they observed some of the surveillance activity that was taking place on some of the locations and that caused them to dispose of whatever they had. Sure. Exactly. So rather than being tipped off, they might have, rather than being tipped off, they might have seen the surveillance vehicles. That's and, what the informant said. Uh, I have no way of knowing. Going back oh. to this ledger, given that it is public record and that you say that this contains the evidence that the Mercury was looking for, right. can we get copies of it? The what? Of the ledger. Of no, a, of I'm, not, I'm not going to distribute any more copies of anything because this Why? thing, because this thing is getting all. Distorted and blown out of proportion, and, and but isn't all this, the way in, to stop that inac from all to this have inaccurate information. But I'm telling you what happened to the right. But if you're material. telling us, and if you have the documentation, and if it is public record, why can't you share that? I'm telling you what what happened to the. Uh, I'm going to retain all of the information related to this case. Is it not public record? somebody, well, if you want to challenge under public record. Uh, you can. But this isn't going to make people think that you may be covering up something. Well, the, the reason I'm holding this, you know, what, what I keep getting questions on is, well, you know, so you've got that written down. How, how do we know it's factual? How do we know this? You know, everybody keeps raising issues and questioning, you know, the, the credibility of what we're saying. What I'm telling you is, that this case was handled no differently than any other case, and uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, misinformation, a lot of literary license. Uh, I see now the statements are, well, we never alleged that there was any CIA involvement. That was the latest statement I heard from the Mercury News. What are you shaking your head no? I believe the statement was a clarification in terms of connection. Oh, clarification, I see. For sure. Sure. Not for to sure. clarify, what the, not to clarify what the jury said, but to clarify how are some you? people have interpreted it, by the way. Uh, well, I just read you the, the misstatement right out of the Mercury News about what the affidavit said, when it's not what the affidavit said. I just read that to you. And a copy of the affidavit was available on the Internet. Right? That we posted. Right. Sure. sure. Since you I'm were saying sure that, that, are, you since you were, that uh, are you saying that the, to your knowledge, the CIA was not running drugs into Los Angeles to get money to support the country? I don't know if they were or were not. I can't make that statement. All I'm saying is we have no knowledge that they were, and there's nothing in our investigation that indicates that they were. And I'm saying that if they were then whoever is responsible should be dealt with uh, in a manner in which any major drug dealer, a major drug dealing organization should be dealt with. I think that it's a crime second only to murder when you consider what happens to not only the people who use this poison, but what happens to their families, what it does to a community, what it does to all of our society. 
So no way in the world would I ever condone or cover up, whether it's the CIA or anybody else, that they're involved in the distribution of illicit drugs. Sheriff, sure. what is the, uh, the, the protocol? Uh, you mentioned uh, in going through the warrant that, in fact, the FBI and the DEA was also involved in an investigation and so forth. But uh, we have a situation that clearly within the search warrant affidavit states that you have drug money that was going to the Contras, who, of course, everybody at that time knew were backed by the CIA. My question is, are there any checks and balances so that did you figure that the FBI and the DEA would handle that? Would the Sheriff's Department at least launch some sort of investigation or make sure that that end of it would be investigated, or was that just let go? Well, what, what is the responsibility to investigate the CIA? Or, I mean, our responsibility was to investigate this uh, drug case, uh, and we did that. Well, my question is, if you, if you come across what could appear to be alleged wrongdoing, especially if it could be alleged by federal government and or its entities or operatives, and I'm just asking for protocol here, is there something where you would step in and have a separate investigation? Would you refer that to some sort of agency, the Justice Department, whomever? Just, Justice Department was involved in the investigation. This allegation was made in federal court. It was made before a federal judge in front of the U.S. Attorney. I mean, so who is it that we're supposed to discuss this with? Well, that's what I'm asking. So I'm, no, as far, that, as, as, far as the LA County that. Sheriff's Department is concerned, it's, it's not your case. That's is that right. right? We, we did, I think, an appropriate uh, uh, investigation. We uh, stated what we knew. Uh, in, in fact, uh, everything that we knew was in the affidavit. Everything that was learned was in the report following the action. Uh, so there was nothing that was concealed in, in any way from, uh, from anybody. Well, Sheriff, since it's unanswered question, do you support Senator Feinstein's call today for her colleagues to conduct an investigation? Specifically, she wants the uh, Judiciary Intelligence Committees to take up the issue during the next Congress. Would you be willing to go back and testify? Absolutely. And give them the information? Yeah, I don't know who the appropriate committee is, but whoever it is, uh, uh, I encourage them to do it. Because this is something that, you know, it is going to be a, a, a festering issue. Uh, not only in this community, but I think, uh, you know, throughout the country. Uh, and it's something that has to be addressed by, uh, you know, proper authorities. And, and I, to be honest with you, I don't think this is something that uh, the media uh, can, can clarify or ever get to the bottom of. I think it's going to take uh, testimony under oath, and uh, uh, that's the way it needs to be pursued. Sure, if you were so, saying that, uh, uh, that although this is handled like any other drug case, because of the agencies involved and the allegations that were raised, even in the initial affidavit, were you brought in, were you alerted to this once the uh, raids were made and the fact that, uh, that there were names in the CIA that were that were listed as, as uh, coming from those places. Were you specifically, so were you specifically notified at all what? at the time at the time of this particular case? Notified of what? That that, that the Lister allegations said, were being made. Yeah, Lister, in this case. Lister, that was in the report. Well, I know, but were you were you specifically then? You were made aware back when this was originally done. This uh, the warrants issued, the returns made, the uh, FBI being brought in. You took a, did you take a special interest in this case because of what the allegations were? No. I mean, when the information we knew that these people might be uh, funneling, money to the, funneling money to the Contras uh, was of interest, uh, absolutely. But the fact that the FBI and the DEA were working with our people, uh, this is not an unusual uh, occurrence. In fact, uh, uh, many such investigations that go on involve you know, multi-agency. Well, in the investigation, that that's true, but in the allegation that you have another governmental agency that's supposedly involved in the one, ring itself. One, one, one person out of the 13 locations said that, uh, you know, that the CIA is not going to like this. Sir, do you that, deputies, that was, that was the extent do deputies of ever report to you that they come in contact with people who identify themselves as CIA agents when they're conducting investigations? No, no, no. You know, they don't come to me directly, no. Do they write it in reports? It's in a report, yeah. Is it frequent that this happens? 
Well, I can't tell you how, how frequent we have people who claim all sorts of things, but the fact that an individual said the CIA is not going to like this, uh, you know, people say things to try and impress you, to try to uh, uh, make you believe how important they are and so forth, but the key is that it did not dissuade the deputies from doing their job. But he went, he even went farther and far enough to name his contact in Virginia. And according to the report that you referred to, that name was in there. You mean, if somebody comes to you and say anyone is dealing drugs in your jurisdiction, Warren, you don't check it out? Warren, I just told you that the FBI sent a memo back to their headquarters. The FBI contacted the CIA. And what, what more were our deputies supposed to do? Can you tell us how much cocaine was confiscated in connection with Glendone? I think uh, less than an ounce, I think. It was a very small amount. It was a very small amount. Less than an ounce? I think so. It is a and I think there was a lister? small amount of marijuana, about a, you know, uh, maybe a a gram or a couple of grams of marijuana in Lister's house. And, and neither Lister nor Blandone was prosecuted? No, Blandone and his wife were arrested. But they prosecuted. Were not prosecuted? At neither local nor federal levels? That's correct. And what was the reason for that again? They said the amount was insufficient to initiate a, a prosecution. That's a rejection from both the DA and the U.S. Attorney. If I might beg your indulgence, uh, Congresswoman Waters is here. May I ask her to step forward? Sure. To ask her a similar question? Yeah. Congresswoman, yes. may we have you to the podium if you don't mind? This is uh, uh, Sheriff uh, Deputy. Sheriff Waters, press conference, if you have not mind. He indicated it would be fine. <laughs> what? Would that be all right? Sure. It's only with his permission. Is that okay? Sure. All right. Sure. I'm just curious about your reaction to the fact that neither Lister nor Blandone was prosecuted because so little a quantity of drugs supposedly confiscated was so small. Cocaine. Well, um, it was not marijuana, it was cocaine that was found. Yeah, Even the Blandone stuff. Well, Blandone even said, the cocaine is mine, the cocaine is mine, as it is in the police report. And I'm not sure what he's referring to, whether he's referring to the small amounts or even more. But they also had some rock, uh, crack cocaine. A few rocks were found, but in addition to that, you had uh, the scales. Uh, some sophisticated uh, scale that starts with an H that's only used by um, drug dealers to weigh. What is the name of the scale? Somebody must know that. I beg your pardon? Triple beam. No, it's health, helpless. Hojas. I beg your pardon? Hojas. Yes, I think that's it. The scales were found, and you also found, um, in addition to the scales, uh, some cutting agents or something like that. It's in the report. But my question is, do you believe there should have been a prosecution? <laughs> well, as I understand it, um, there are a lot of arrests and prosecutions that are made without having any of the drugs uh, in possession, but rather conspiracy. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, in talking with a lot of the people on the street down in South Central Los Angeles, they tell me many of the convictions have been done on conspiracy to sell uh, cocaine, but you did have people who had been under investigation uh, by the DEA and others for over three years. They did find scales and they did find uh, small amounts of cocaine. And so it is, I would, I, would, I would consider that unusual that there would be no attempt at prosecution, particularly with all of the information of the informants that was available. I think by now in that report, you will see maybe five informants uh, who have very strong information. They've been under surveillance now for a long time. So I'm not, you know, I'm not in law enforcement, but it, it does seem strange. You, you produced a chart this morning, at least one was handed out where there was um, the results of a, an ounce of cocaine um, producing some 300 rocks. 
Yes. Is that true? Well, yes, um, and probably some of the deputies here probably know this stuff better than most of us, uh, given the work that they have to do. But yes, uh, it is true that out of an ounce, uh, you could get uh, 300 rocks. And, um, you know, as we know, uh, Blandone, just at that one location, was dealing about 10 kilos per week, in addition to Mr. Argelis, who's mentioned uh, in that report, who was dealing about 20 uh, kilos per week, so you're talking about a lot of cocaine. Congressman, what do you have to say to Sherman Block saying that he will not uh, release any additional information regarding the case unless there's a congressional hearing or is uh, released to someone with support? No, that's his decision. Let me ask you a yeah. question. Sure. Did you say you had trouble getting those reports? Yes, I did. I had trouble. What kind of trouble did you have? Uh, as I described to the press this morning, um, after uh, entering the um, record section, a young lady was rather cooperative. At first, we went to her office. She said that a lot of people had been inquiring. She had them on her desk. She was then um, visited by the captain of the station. And then the two of them uh, said they had to excuse themselves. They left, and they stayed away so long, I went to see about them. I went over by his office, and um, I asked um, her to let me have the reports, to, to see the reports. Um, he was still checking. I, I, I kind of suspected he was checking with you or somebody downtown. And um, he came out and he said that um, he could not let me have the reports. Uh, by this time, I had gotten the reports out of her hand and I had given them to one of my assistants who walked away with the reports and they ran and caught him and had him come back. And they said they could not give them to me for a number of reasons, that they were operating under administrative uh, law, that somehow uh, if there was an investigation in process, they could not release them to anybody else except, I think they said, the people involved in investigation. Then they said, uh, secondly, that they may have the names of uh, informants in the material that they would want to protect. And I told them that that should be redacted, that it was public information, they could redact that and still give them out. And. Um, so I sat while he uh, waited for someone to bring him information from one of the legal books, which they did not find. And I waited and I told him to look through to see if any informant's names was in the material, because I had not seen any. And he looked through and I said that, um, you know, I had to have the material. And finally he gave them to me after, but he didn't want to. Well, he was nice. I mean, yeah. they, they didn't want to, he wouldn't have. Well, I think what I suspected <laughs> was that he was told from your people from downtown that try not to give them to me, but if I insisted, they had to give them to me. There's no, there's no such thing, try not to, but if he insisted to give them. I mean, he may have checked. To he see, tried not to give them to he me. He may have checked to see if it was still an active investigation, which would preclude you from. Oh, I think everybody knows that this has been a long time ago. Well, well, Next. With he didn't say that was the reason. Well, but with all the publicity yeah. for all the people in the yeah. record bureau, yeah. all this thing was yeah. very Sure, do you consider what she went through difficulty in getting them in Congress? No, I, I, I don't. Those, you know, she's not entitled to any more than anybody else. Oh, no, and I wasn't, I was going... So, so what I'm saying is the fact that she's a congresswoman was not the relevant relevant issue. But it's public information, yeah. and it should be available to anybody Congresswoman uh, who's, who's seeking the information. And well, I got them after difficulty, but that's okay. How long were you there? About two hours. Two hours? Yeah. In, that's in, okay. That's right. In the information that you got, though, yes. while there was while there were release reports on the other location, I identified and listed there that um, I did not get the corresponding um, report on what happened to that evidence. Um, it was not released to anybody. Uh, where is it? Well, that, that evidence went to the. As I indicated, it was in the evidence locker. It was not released uh, uh, because what was not claimed went to the property custodian. And then ultimately, in December of that year, or December of 1987, uh, after a little more than a year, uh, it was disposed of in several ways. That which had no value was destroyed. That's what had a value, such as the monitors, the camera, the ammunition. Uh, whatever else was of value was, was put to use. Well, what's strange about that is there were two locations that belonged to Mr. Lister. One of the locations you had evidence that was released to his attorney. Uh, so I know he had an attorney uh, that was um, signing for the release of information. 
one location that did not include the documents that had been copied by Mr. Garner uh, was released to that attorney. The other location, no I release. It was not in the sub because it wasn't released to anybody. Well, I guess that's the question. That's it. Why the wasn't that information? Why is the information that is the same information that was copied by Mr. Garner, that was sealed by the courts, the information by which the uh, judge placed a gag order on uh, Holland Braun, the attorney, why is that information missing? Why was it not released to his attorney? The attorney got the other information, other evidence, uh, and why was this particular information that was copied by Mr. Garner all of a sudden not released to anybody and it's sealed by the court? I mean, not that you should know all of these answers, but these are the kinds of okay. questions that come to mind. But in a supplemental yes. report yes. Of, of a case, as material is released to the owner, to an attorney, yes. a supplemental report is written and made part of the file. This evidence remained in the sheriff's narcotics evidence locker until it was transferred to the property custodian at the property warehouse, and that's recorded in the ledger, and then the property custodian has their reports as to when they make disposition of the uh, uh, material. So do they have the, the, um, the disposition of that evidence that was May I see it, please? The monitor went to the department. The monitor went to the department. The monitor went to the department. The camera went to the department. Miscellaneous paper uh, mm -hmm. destroyed, no value. Uh, miscellaneous papers destroyed, no value. Mm -hmm. uh, Training films destroyed, no value. The training films that are the training films of the FDN and uh, Nick I have no idea what they are. Uh, this is training films. They are Army training films of. Uh, well, they were films that were uh, technical films, I understand. Where the pay O sheets of uh, documents of dope sales and. Uh, well, but they were, they're in this papers and they're. And they were destroyed as, as no value. Uh, license plates, miscellaneous papers, uh, miscellaneous ammo, uh, went to the crime lab. So that's, this was in December 22nd, 1987. Does anyone have the information on which of those documents were copied by Mr. Garner? I have no idea what you're talking about. No idea what Garner copied. Ms. Waters, are you satisfied at this point that there that there wasn't any sort of collusion on behalf of the Sheriff's Department or some sort of effort to conceal information, or do you think there still might be? Oh, I don't know. I mean, and I can't even speculate about that. I just don't know what has happened uh, uh, here except for what the Sheriff uh, Block tells me. Uh, has happened. We do know that Mr. Garner, who was one of his deputies, who was a problem, I guess, had some problems. Several years later. <laughs> that he did copy um, documents that he hoped to use in his defense. And um, we don't know what he copied. Uh, we don't know if what you destroyed was part of what he copied. We don't, we just don't know. I have no idea what he copied. Yeah. Do you plan to push forward, Ms. Lovers, with this probe? Oh, yes. Uh, the investigation um, has been opened up, uh, as you know, and um, I am um, doing everything that I can to, to be of assistance um, when there is an opportunity to um, uh, fulfill a request by uh, any of you. Um, and others, I will attempt to do that. Um, so I will do everything that I can to continue to uh, leave no stone unturned. Sure. Were you saying that that uh, with the Lister property, uh, there was some return given to the, to uh, his attorney? And if so, you know what? Some property. Yeah. Some yeah property ledger. Now. Ledger. Can, should, in fact, the reports that can, the uh, uh, Carson Waters had uh, has all that was returned directly to the. Owner, what was returned to the attorneys? Uh, the but we had only we papers. have only the reports of one of the uh, addresses 
And the the other address yeah. is the one that that the, everything was missing on. Right. Yeah. Never, we don't have a recording. Yeah, they yet. never requested that yes. the return of that, so it went to the evidence. Uh, at the property custodian, uh, you know, several months later, and then was disposed of uh, a year later. Sheriff Block, uh, as you spoke earlier, as you began this thing about the fact that there were rumors, there were there was misinformation. Uh, at this point in time, right now, is the the citizens of Los Angeles County, of course, will be listening to this uh, this evening and this week. Can you tell the people of Los Angeles County that categorically that the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department had no knowledge of any CIA contra drug connection and was not involved in any way, shape, or form. Absolutely. Okay, Despite thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. 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 Thank you had been investigating them over a three-year period of time, I would really find it just unconscionable that they would not have shared that information with the Sheriff's Department. Um, the drug agents uh, of the United States of America who knows that these guys are uh, cocaine dealers and they're trying to nail them, if they engaged uh, the Sheriff's Department and this search warrant effort, without giving them the background, I would be they, angry they, with them. They, they didn't engage us. We, we were engaged because this information originally came to the Bell Police Department. The Bell Police Department indicated that they did not have adequate resources to pursue this investigation because of the allegation that these people were major dealers and that there uh, may be a tie to the Contras. Oh, so, well. so we assumed that from the Bell Police Department. Okay. But, as, but yes. as the investigation yes. developed, yes. we learned that the DEA and the FBI had informants, and they were working mm -hmm. on the same same organization. We only were there very briefly. Shortly after we received the information, uh, we uh, developed the affidavit and got the search warrants. We weren't involved for three years. No, I know you weren't. But what I was saying was that the question really had to do with uh, how much information uh, did you have at that time. And what I guess all I'm saying is that with the long-term involvement of the DEA and the fact that the DEA were on the raids, they had representatives with your sheriffs, if they didn't share with you the information about the Contra connection, then I think that's, that's bad on their part. They should have done that. We, they confirmed the Contra connection. That's what I'm saying. They said that their informants have been giving them the same information about the Contra connection. Oh, I In see. Fact, the FBI was aware of the alleged Contra connection. The DEA had information about the alleged Contra connection. So we were all on the same wavelength I see. Okay. as far as the Contras are concerned. Okay. The CIA is the issue that, that never came up. Except for what Mr. Lister said. Except uh, his, his statement that, you know, do you know if anybody checked with Langley for the name that appears in the police report of uh, Mr. Weekly? Yes, the FBI did. Do you know what they found out? They found out that they didn't know any of those names except one who they said was a cocaine dealer, so I don't know which one that was. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, this went to Brandon. This is a council. That's, that's Brandon. Okay, this is the well, Legardo address. That's the Legardo address. Okay, to the property custodian on, okay. on February 5th, mm -hmm. 1987. Mm -hmm. And that's the officer who released it to the property custodian. Oh, oh, he released it to the property custodian, property custodian. Mr. Legardo. So then it's, it's in storage at that point, is that right? Right, if okay. it goes to here. And then it goes down to the warehouse. Goes to the warehouse. Okay. And this, this is the same items. I see. Okay. And this went to department use. 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 What we have D to do D is DMV uh, means destroyed. No, mm -hmm. no value. Mm -hmm. This 
destroy no value. This went to the crime now, lab. What, what, what appears to, to happen here is that the listing of the evidence is not as detailed as the evidence that is taken in. So what I need to do well, is I need to match it up. Detail. Well, what I have to do is I have to take each one of these items to see if it matches yeah, over it. here. You can see it right there. It's pretty clear. One intact monitor, one intact monitor. Or three intact monitors. One, two, three. One video camera. It's an intact camera. A uh, box. Military training field. Envelope. Military training film. Five large checkbooks. See, when it goes there, it goes as miscellaneous papers once it goes to the... Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. And it, it, it does not match. Yeah. The well, detail they, does not match. Well, they go as miscellaneous papers when they go down to... Uh, to the uh, I see. evidence for destruction. I see. I see. What's why would, a, what's why would military, no value why to the case that's, that's being investigated? It's, it's of no value to, it's no value. In other words, it has no monetary value. So but it's not auctioned off, it's not of any use to the department. So to the courts? So it's destroyed. Isn't the case is over. That's what I there mean. There was no case. But it could be of value to some other phase of the investigation, right. if there were one. Well, or the need this, this to. is over a year later. So both the F FBI right. investigation was closed at that point, or? I, there was well, no investigation. Well, what we don't know is whether or not the no DEA, who's now been investigating them for three years, whether or not they looked at this information, whether this information was they, given to them or anything. They got copies of everything we had. I mean, Xerox copies of all paperwork we had. Why would you think that military training films were irrelevant? Well, who were they evaluated to? I mean, if nobody claimed them, who are they valued? But if you no, knew no that there was a... If, if no there, value to us. If there was discussion and the DA was telling you that these guys were connected to the Contras and maybe selling dope to fund the Contras, and you see military training films of uh, training for the FDN, that may be of some value. Maybe. Well, well, maybe. This, this means monetary value. After a case is closed, if something has no monetary value... I see. ...then it's destroyed. If All it's right. not usable by... Anyone. Okay. Thank you, Sheriff. Well, I think the Sheriff has been very cooperative, and I want to thank you very okay. much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, okay. believe me. Thank when you. it comes to drugs, uh, yeah. I. Thank you. Thank you.